Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to be touching base on some more, um, oh shit. I just noticed this right here. Okay, that's off of one of my, I think it's the Defiance Alien. I will be right back. And we'll get into this particular figure here in a second, okay? Be right back. Okay, we're back and we end up putting that piece back into the Defiance Alien. It's a removable piece. In most cases, when it comes to the NECA figures, some of them are permanent part of the um, the body, but then obviously some of them are pieces that you got to squeeze in there, and that's what I end up doing. And doing so, I end up knocking all the other figures down, so it took me a little bit of time to get them all together, get them all straightened out, but we're good to go. So anyway, long story short, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. This is Alien Collection number two. We're going to touch base on some of the figures that I have here in the second part. And i um, going to do the best that I can in giving you the information based on these particular figures. We're going to start with this one here. And then we're going to move into a, another video, which is probably going to be the uh, last part of the Alien Collection that I have. And then we'll move into the next uh, horror, you know, horror section. What it is, I don't know. Might be Predators. I'm not sure what I want to do with it. But anyway, long story short, let's get into the albino xenomorph, okay? And this guy is very unique. Now, it is an actual 7-inch figure. It's from the Series 9 xenomorph albino drone action figure is what it's actually called. Okay? Got to kind of straighten this thing out. All right. There we go. All right, this thing right now on Amazon is actually running for seventy dollars. It's amazing how things just seem to go up in price, but never go down. It's all about profits in today's society, so keep that in mind. Now, one thing I've noticed <coughs> is that Trick or Treat Studios decided to raise their prices on pretty much all their masks. I, I've seen the pattern. I went through Big Bad Toy Store, noticed that they jacked the prices up a bit. In Amazon where I have it in my list they jumped up in price so I deleted all those masks I don't think I'll get them until they actually drop back down in price if they drop back if they don't then I just won't be getting them but long story short I do have some masks that will eventually be coming once I purchase them I've got some coming from Ghoulish Productions which is not a bad company their masks, especially their clown masks they're really good okay so keep that in mind I do like their masks so keep that and um, in Big Bad Toy Store, obviously they're shipping their handles like $10. So if you attach $10 onto the original price, it's going to be about $80 for a Trick or Treat Studios mask, depending on what it is. But now the substandard price is $80, you know, just to get it to your home, if you were to order it online. Now if you, <clears throat> if you go through um, uh, Spirit of Halloween and stuff like that, still going to probably cost you about that much okay no offense but spirit halloween is a little bit higher priced so with this in mind this is in fact the albino um alien or the xenomorph now i will take this down and i'll show you some things about it um it is from a comic book it's not from any movie none, none of the live action movies uh, i don't know if it's from a video game or anything like that all i know is it's that um it's made by NECA. Uh, and it does stand over nine inches tall according to what they say and it also has 30 points of articulation It is based on James Cameron's original concept design Based on the 1986 Aliens film so it is part of the film fr franchise, but you don't actually see it in the movies uh, It's just a concept design which would have been cool to see that but anyway It is a combination of xenomorph and a face hugger as you can clearly see it can uh, implant its own embryo in its adult form when no other xenomorph can do that all right so let me do something here I'm gonna pull and shut this off here real quick and then we're gonna get into the actual design of this thing I'm gonna pull the camera back so we can get some room to play with it there we go all right now first thing is the head or the crest here again very Praetorian like they have these big huge heads that had these very unique designs. Now, when it comes to uh, James Cameron's aliens, you'll notice that just the damn near every one of the aliens in the movies, the, the drones, the warriors, 
Uh, they in fact had this similar design on the crest. In the very first movie, not so much. It was very smooth, but it also had a skull in the front and the uh, XX121, which is the original um, Xenomorph that you've seen in the 1979 movie, but his entire crest was absolutely smooth. These in the 1986 movie are all jagged design. Very cool looking designs. But anyway, as you can see, the actual mouth in itself, very Queen-esque like, okay? You'll notice that the Queen has a similar head to this, except obviously her crest is huge. So what I'm going to do is, this right here, is show you, now you see this secondary piece right here? It is a little loose, it does come out, but I'm not going to pull it out. Because that was the one piece I had to go put back in the Defiance Alien. That one's a little loose, but I got it in there, and hopefully it'll stay in there. The tubes in the back are very traditional to the original 1979 XX121. Alright, and that, obviously the body style is very similar to the XX121. They mold most of the NECA figures off of that original design, with a few exceptions, which you'll see real soon. Alright, because I got one here that's really cool. It's called the Snake Alien. Alright, now with this in mind, I'm going to set him down for a second here and pull the actual tube out of his mouth. I'm not going to pull it out, but you get an idea of what it is. It's way up inside the head. See? Um, it is bendy. You can actually bend it and do any kind of crazy stuff with it. But I just kind of choose to keep it down. Okay, just like so. Just to give you an idea that it can implant it into its host and, you know, obviously plant an egg or whatever the case may be. Uh, this is the only adult form that can do that. Most of the time it's a face hugger that does the job. Now, this guy here obviously is a, you know, a concept art, uh, but he's based on the face hugger design, but obviously he's a xenomorph, a full adult xenomorph. Bendy wire in the tail, say, okay. The body is very similar. The articulation, like I said, is 30 points of articulation. The head does move back and forth, but do not try to force it up and down because you'll pop this piece out. You don't want to do that if you get one of these. Now, understand when I first got this, I believe I got it for like 30 bucks. It's now double in price. It's now $70 on Amazon. It's ridiculous how much they cost now. Now the backdrop as you can see here, I am working on doing something with that. I'm going to actually create, hang on, um, there, try to get a bigger backdrop so you don't see the background like you just did. Okay, I will eventually work on that process. I might have to actually build a backdrop, push it against the table and we'll take it from there. But anyway, whoops, that is my albino version of the drone warrior but it is a concept design you don't see any of this in any of the movies okay so keep that in mind uh, the feet are almost similar to the xx121 except it's very claw very uh, prehistoric like if that makes any sense all right the other ones in the xx121 is more like shoes they kind of look like a shoe with a little uh kind of uh, pointy thing sticking out so it's kind of almost like a genie type shoe but these are just a little bit uh, better designed when it comes to the xenomorphs anyway anyway he's a very cool looking guy and the color scheme is very cool too he's got some gray in him some purple okay lavender and some white okay he's a very cool looking color but anyway let's move on let's get him out of the way now what we're going to do here is get into this guy here. All right, now we're going to hold off on him. Uh, I think it's just the Battle Damage Xenomorph. I think that's what it's called. All right, so I'll be right back, guys. So hang in there. Okay, we're back, and we're going to be touching base on this particular figure. It is, in fact, the Battle Damage Xenomorph. It does come in blue and as well as black. This one here is a blue color scheme. I chose this color because it really stands out along with the actual gray and stuff like that. We're going to look at this very close. It is a very cool looking figure. Okay. The figure in itself is roughly, it says right here, 1.5 by 3 by 9 inches. So it is 9 inches tall. 
and it roughly weighs about uh, six ounces okay uh, the actual age limit is anywhere from 204 months I don't know why they do that <laughs> to 999 months so if you're older than 999 months you can't be playing with this thing okay guys <laughs> But anyway, long story short, it is the battle damage version of the Alien Warrior, the Xenomorph. Uh, I think it's based off of the comic book. And it does have 30, uh, 30 points of articulation. Uh, they're in range, motion, boo, boo, boo. Alright, but anyway, long story short, that's what this is. Alright, so what we're going to do is pull this back again. And I'm going to show you what this thing looks like up close and personal. Now, I got this from the comic book store years ago. And again, it was 20 bucks at the time. It is now 44 20 So everything's doubled in price. So keep that in mind. And, but anyway, let me show you what this thing looks like. Let me pull his arms out of the way so we can get some close-up shots of his face. Because he is a mess, as you can see. Okay. And that's very cool. His mouth is blown apart up on top. They did a fantastic job on this thing. It's very unique the way they did this. Alright. Now the secondary piece in here. Is solid. See. Some of these NECA figures have a solid piece. This will not move. And the other ones like the Defiance Alien. And the one I just showed you. They come out. So I'll keep that in mind. Alright. The body styles are very similar to the XX121. Uh, these are very traditional when it comes to their molds. Most of the time, you'll see their body styles are very uh, similar. It also has this blade-like thing on its arms, okay? And it's got blast marks right here. Kaplow! Alright. But he is a mess. Look at that. I am messed up. <laughs> like I said, it comes in blue and black. And I believe this one here is the black one. The blue one is a little bit uh, lighter shade. Um, I'd show you a picture of it, but I, I can't. But anyway, um, it is a little bit lighter in color compared to this one. This one's more the black one. All right? and I thought it was the blue one, but it wasn't. But anyway, it's got a very similar body style to the albino with the exception of the head and a few other things along with it. Okay, But that is my battle damage version of the Alien Warrior. Okay, now I don't know what movie it's from. It's actually probably from a comic book. I'm not really sure. Uh-oh, we got crickets outside. <laughs> okay, but anyway, let's move on to the next figure. I want to show you this here. This is actually the Queen Face Hugger. What this thing does, now you'll see it in the movie um, Alien 3. Um, you see, it's in a deleted scene if you have the actual uh, Alien Quadrilogy DVD set or the Blu-ray set. Could possibly show you the behind the scenes. It shows in a deleted scene where, um, oh yeah, I think I forgot to turn that on the last time. But anyway, um, the air conditioner. I keep, I turn it off, but I keep forgetting to turn it back on. All right, but anyway, the wife must have turned it back on. Uh, long story short, you actually see him holding it up, you know, kind of like upside down. And this thing was huge. These are capable of implanting embryos based on a queen only. The other face huggers are a little bit different. They just, you know, set them up for um, alien warriors and other figures into their host. But these are basically strictly queens. Now, one thing I've noticed in the, um, the AVP movies, especially, I think it's the first one. Or was it the second one? No, it's the first one. There is a queen in that movie, and she is a lot larger than your standard queen. For I don't, don't know if she's actually a clone or anything, but she was extremely huge. She was like literally 25 feet tall. Most standard queens are usually anywhere from 15 to maybe 20, but this one was a lot bigger. Okay, it was dealing with the uh, Predator. I think it was Celtic. I'm not sure who it was. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. But anyway, long story short, she was one big motherfucker, okay? Anyway, this is the face hugger based on the queen face hugger that you only see in a deleted scene in part three, uh, Alien 3, where you actually see him holding it up. And they're already dead because obviously she planted her embryo into Sigourney Weaver 
and you see what happened at the end of the movie. Okay? Alright. That's a very good, uh, good movie. A lot of people don't like it. It's probably the worst one of the bunch. That and Alien Resurrection is another one. They seem to go downhill when it comes to that kind of stuff anyway. But rumor has it they are, in fact, um, either rebooting the franchise or actually making another movie that's supposedly going to have Sigourney Weaver, Michael Bean, and possibly some other characters from the first couple of movies. Well, that'd be cool to see how they handle that. But anyway, that is the Queen Facehugger, okay? All right, let's get into this guy here. This guy here, because he's big and he's very hard to stand, okay? So keep that in mind. It is the Gorilla Alien or the Gorilla Xenomorph. I mean, him to stay standing up would be good. There we go. Make sure that tail, hang on, before we do that, bend that tail out of the way so it doesn't rub against the background. All right, so let me move that in so you can actually see it up close. It's a very cool looking design. It's where a face hugger imp um, impregnated a gorilla, and this is the end result. It does come with two um, skull caps one's a plastic one, and this one here, I believe, uh, they're sitting on the shelf back there. I think they're in sun uh, inside one of the eggs. I just forgot to bring them out, but anyway, it does come with a plastic dome, I think two of them, uh, but it's a very cool looking design. You'll notice that the tubes in the back are a lot shorter, it's obviously because the host is a lot different, so let me shut that down real quick. All right. Again, like I said with the backdrop, got to get it perfect. Alright, the tail. As you can see, that is very unique the way they did the tail. Okay, it is also a bendy wire. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back. I uh, better not do that. Okay, and that's what. You, let me get the hands out of the way so you can see his face. There you go, guys. Oh, shadowing. Now, does it have it? It does have a secondary mouth in it. Most of these xenomorphs have secondary mouths. This one's one ugly motherfucker. That's a predators. But it is a very cool looking design. And I'm not sure where I got this from. I think I ordered this online many, many moons ago. I'm not sure how much this one costs, but I'm sure it's doubled in price. All right. But the back, you notice the tubes are irregular. Not as traditional as the other xenomorphs. Obviously, they're because the host is a way bit different. The back in itself get that tail out of the way that's a very cool looking design All right. there's also the uh, rhino alien which is probably the newest one they got out right now and that's up there in price too I thought about getting that one but I said no I got enough of that morphs right. it's a very cool looking design on this thing I like the detail they paid attention to the detail on this gorilla alien and he's got these big hands okay but like I said, when it comes to this figure here, you have to put him in a certain position, otherwise he'll just keep falling over because he is top heavy. The crest is very Praetorian like, but much more pronounced than your standard uh, Praetorian, okay? And not as big as the Queen, but pretty close to it. Alright. And that's the back of the head. But I like this figure too, I think it's really cool looking. The color scheme, everything, the bone ivory color of the actual skull, along with some uh, dark colors in it, really stands out. The skull looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of the original XX121, except it has its dome, and you actually do see the skull configuration in the front. In my SH Monsters version, it does show you that. I will show you that in the next video, because that's obviously going to be the last video based on my xenomorphs. All right, enough about the gorilla alien. Moving on, guys. Let's get into this guy here. This is a keychain based on an alien xenomorph 
He's a warrior, or a drone, as they want to call him. It is a keychain. That's pretty cool looking. Right. I can't remember where I got this from. Right. But it's got cool looking designs to it. I'm sorry about that. But like I said, I have to figure out the lighting as well. Okay. I got a lot to do when it comes to the backdrop on these things and get it perfect so I can actually do these videos right. Alright. Okay. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to take a little break here and I'm going to be right back and I'm going to show you what the rest of the stuff that I got. Okay. So hang in there. I'll be right back. Okay. We're back here and we're going to be looking at the space jockey from the very first uh, movie, possibly the second one, but I think it's the first movie. Uh, I'm going to show you some interesting things about this. They also have a connection with uh, the engineers from Prometheus. And some people say there's no connection. You know, it's just a bunch of crazy stuff. But anyway, long story short, we're going to look at the space jockey. This actual uh, figure in itself, I'm not sure how much it costs. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at it right now. And I'll be with you in a second. You just look at the space jockey and I'll be with you guys in a second here. Let's see. There it is, NECA. There it is. Okay, we are back. Let's talk about this particular replica of the Space Jockey. Now, the actual product size for this thing is roughly 30 by 20 by 2.5 or 2.3 inches. And it roughly weighs around five pounds in itself. Again, I don't know why they put the range, uh, age range in months. That makes no sense at all. Just put them in years. I think people can figure that part out. It is multicolored and it is made of a rubber, but it's not completely rubber. Okay. It is made of some kind of resin, but it's not rubber. Even though they say it is. If it's a rubber, it's hard. It's a hard rubber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this off. And we're going to look at this particular guy. Keep that so the backdrop don't. See, that's the bad thing about this. This backdrop's not big enough. But anyway, this is the space jockey. He is the pilot and engineer, technically, according to Prometheus. And obviously, he crashed land on that planet. I can't remember the name of it. The, the acronym is, I don't know, some kind of crazy number. But anyway, LV-47 or something like that. But this is, in fact... The space jockey. Now I got this here and it runs around. Hang on. It doesn't even have a price on this thing, does it? No, it don't. Okay, usually they range around $20 for these things. But I'm sure it's up there and a little bit up there in price. Now one thing you'll notice here, if you look at it really close. If the shadow will let me do it. Now you see the little hole in his chest? Obviously the engineer was... Um, Obviously, the face hugger got a hold of him, and the chest burster came out. And technically, I don't know what happened. It might have been a queen or something, because when they were on that planet, you see all of these eggs laying all over the place. They've been there for a while, so it's most likely a queen that was laying all those eggs that came out of this engineer. That's just my thinking on that. But anyway, long story short, this is what the actual space jockey looks like. Okay. Yeah, the shadow in here. Like I said, I'll get I'll, I'll get to working on this uh, backdrop and everything. I need to do a better job on that part. Okay, this is a very cool looking piece. Mm -hmm. It is a NECA figure. I will tell you that. Let me see if it says it here. It says Fox. Yeah, NECA. I don't know if you can see it or not. That's what it says. Okay. Okay, well, anyway, that is my space jockey, okay? Look at the undertow on this thing. Cool. I love the design of this thing. Okay. All right. Now, let's get into this guy here. This one is a McFarlane figure. Okay, and it is based off of AVP, the movie, where they go down. There we go. This is Grid, okay? It is a neck of, no, it's actually McFarlane, that's what it is. I'm pretty sure it is. 
Yeah, I'm thinking it is. It's not a NECA figure. It's too detailed to be a NECA figure. Uh, my um, other Alien Warrior that I showed in the last video is brown in color. It's a McFarlane figure. This one is too, okay? It's just a design and the actual um, detail are usually a little bit better than that of the NECA figures, okay? McFarlane always does an amazing job when it comes to these NECA, uh, when it comes to these figures in general. I keep saying NECA, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, let's just shut that down. Let me show you what this looks like. This is great. As you can see, the markings are on his head. Okay, that's when Celtic, I think it was, shot that net. And it started squeezing on his head to the point that it bled. And obviously, the xenomorphs, they bleed uh, acid, which is a very perfect weapon, in my opinion. Well, it bled through, and he obviously survived. And then towards the end, obviously, he got blown up. But he was like more or less the leader of the uh, of the uh, the xenomorphs inside that uh, pyramid and stuff, and he was probably the smartest one of the bunch. But it was actually a pretty good movie. Again, when we get into the reboots and crossovers, people always seem to criticize them. I don't understand why they do that. It is just a movie, people. But anyway, uh, most cases people like to stick to a tradition. The same rule applies to um, a Nightmare on Elm Street. They did the reboot in 2010. People didn't like that. The Rob Zombie version of Halloween in 2007. People didn't like that. The Jason Voorhees in 2009. People didn't like that. <laughs> I just don't get what people did. And the new Chucky movie. People didn't like that. They just don't like reboots. I don't know what it is. But they do actually come out of the woodwork saying, Well, I don't like the movie. Especially with the Halloween movies. The second one, I believe... Someone mentioned there was a rape scene. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I kind of tend to overlook those kind of things because I haven't seen the movie in a while. But I like the Rob Zombie movies. I don't care what people say. All right, anyway, grid. McFarlane figure. Articulation-wise, when it comes to these guys, they are different than that of um, the NECA figures in themselves. As you can see, the tubes are a little bit different than your standard Xanomorph. And the design overall is different too. Okay. I do like the McFarlane figures. Uh, you'll notice that my um, in the first video, I do show the uh, original Alien Warrior from McFarlane. It's got a very similar body style, except the, the color scheme is a little bit different. And obviously the head. Okay. But they are almost similar. Except the legs are a little bit different too. But this is a very cool looking uh, figure in itself. Now, I do have the round disc that comes where it stands on the disc. I got that in the other room. I just forgot to bring it out. Sorry about that. Okay, that is what she looks like. That is grid from AVP. Okay, the head does turn. Okay, and as you can see the head, it is damaged. But he is a cool looking character. I like the way they curl the, the fingers. I think that's cool. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into these guys here. These are face hugger, I don't know, light tubes, I guess you want to call them. Okay. And they're actually supposed to be watering them. You can fill these up with water, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. It's almost like the oxygen destroyer from uh, Godzilla, 1954. You could actually probably take one of these and turn them into an oxygen destroyer in some aspects. Well, that's loose. I don't know why that is. Anyway. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see if it works. Oh, it does work. Okay. I don't know if you can see it because of the light. But it is lit, as you can see. Okay. And guess what, guys? I have... Oh, I see what's going on here. It is falling apart on me. Okay. There it is. Okay. Got to be careful with that, guys. I have another one. See? Two. I'm looking at this camera. It looks like it's dirty. Maybe it's just a screen. I don't know. Now let's turn this one on. Ah, there you go. Okay. It does work. And those are my two tube face hugger tubes. I don't know what you want to call them, but now last but not least, we're gonna get into the last part of this. I'm gonna take these guys down. 
we're going to get into this very unique looking figure here. It is in fact the snake alien. Now when I first did not get this, I looked at it and I said to myself, eh, I'm not going to get that right now. It's cool looking, I said. But if I said if I don't get it, I'm going to kick myself in the ass. And I end up getting it. I'm going to straighten it up in a second here, guys. Just want you to get a close-up look of it. All right. But I want to show you how really, really cool neck I did on the design of this thing. Apparently a face hugger crossbred or hosted with a uh, snake, and that's the end result. All right, very skeletal-like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to shut that off and show you the articulation, the unique things about this figure. All right, now, with this, let's start off with the head. As you can see, it's very... Praetorian like let me pull back a little bit more and now you're gonna see the background I apologize about that But like I said, I will get that straightened out eventually. I got to work on doing a do-it-yourself type project All right the mouthpiece you can close it in just like you see in it Or you can super extend it just like so All right. You can close off the mouth as you can see It's got these serious fangs right here these lower fangs Kind of remind me of Gamera, Gamera the Flying Turtle from 1965. Uh, that's a Daiei uh, monster, very similar to Godzilla, not as popular as Godzilla. But in the Heisei series, that particular special effects, the movies that they did with Shizuki Kaneko. I don't know how you want to pronounce his name. But anyway, those three movies surpassed anything Godzilla-wise when it comes to special effects, storylines, um, they won awards for all kinds of stuff for those movies because they really stood out. Okay, it's not a criticism towards the um, Godzilla movies. It's just that um, they did a really good job on those movies and they really stood out. Giving, them, giving people a reason to stand there and say, well, you know, Gamera, uh, he's a worthy contender to Godzilla. In a sense, he is, okay? He's, you know, if you're a kaiju fan, you know what I'm talking about. He is... He's just as recognized, put it that way, if you're a Kaiju fan. But anyway, this guy right here, the head, the, the crest, is very Praetorian-like again, but it's a lot longer, okay? All right. But again, it's not like the Queen. The Queen is much more huge, you know what I'm saying? She's got a big crest. The unique thing about this here is these here, these little, I don't know, like uh, claw-like things, they do move, okay? You can move them up and down, see? Right. And you can just reposition them in any way you want. Okay? But look at the detail of that. It's ridiculous. See, some of these are a little bent, so you got to straighten them up. Okay? Alright. Alright, there you go. And that's what she looks like. Okay, guys? Now, again, because it's a snake type thing, you got to set it up. So, she literally just stands like this without toppling over because she is top heavy. All right, let's give you the back end of this thing. Look at that. That is cool looking. Love the color scheme, too. It's got some bronze, black. Great combination. Okay. The head is very stiff. But you see, it clicks. So it's a ball joint type thing. But it does move up and down, and it will move from side to side. I don't do that because I just pretty much just let it sit on my shelf. And look pretty. Now, as you can see, these here, you gotta be careful with these. Okay? You gotta keep them straight. Okay, guys? Alright, now let's follow the tail. Okay? All the way down, as you can see. Alright? Alright. And you can curl this up, do whatever you want with it. See? See what I'm saying? You gotta get it so it. Stands up. Let me see what I can do here. All right. So, like I said, she is top heavy, so you got to pull it back a little bit. There you go. All right. Now, one thing I noticed about this, articulation-wise, right here it does twist. See? You can kind of twist it this way. All right. See, she's top heavy, so you got to make sure it is perfect when you do it. Here we go. See, that's what she looks like. And that's the end of this particular collection right here, guys. 
I'll let you look at that. I know this wasn't the greatest video because I got a little confused and I had to shut the video off and stuff like that. But you pretty much got an idea of what I have so far in the last uh, video plus this one here. I've got another one i got to concentrate on which will be the last of the Xenomorphs or the Alien Collection. I also have the Quadrilogy on DVD. Yes, DVD, not the Blu-ray. I have a Blu-ray player but I don't use it because most of my movies are sitting on my external hard drives. And I just watch them straight off of my hard drive, so I don't really mess around with uh, buying Blu-rays or anything. Unless it's absolutely something that I want, collection-wise, okay? Like uh, Shin Godzilla, I end up getting that. Okay. There we go. Oh, one thing about those tusks, they do move up and down. I forgot to tell you about that. But there is a lot of decent articulation on this particular figure, okay? There you go. And that's what she looks like, okay guys? Anyway, that's it on my collection so far. Again, I'm going to concentrate on the next one probably tomorrow. Because I'm off tomorrow. And I also got another mask coming in. It is the Jamie mask from Part 4. That's where Danielle Harris, she was just a little girl. And she was wearing a costume being chased by Michael Myers. It's the one with the little red button nose. I do got that mask coming in from Big Bad Toy Store. When, I don't know when it's coming in. It should be here in the next couple of days. Possibly today. I don't know. But I'll do a video on that as well. There are videos out there based on that mask. But I want to do my own. Okay. But anyway. Uh, this is it so far on this particular video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell. Because I will be pushing out some more videos. And eventually we are getting close to where Spirit Halloween. And a bunch of these stores will start opening up and stocking. Halloween stuff we're going to be doing some more walkthroughs okay I just did a few of them last month and some of them stores are still you know because it's early nothing's really happening but uh, eventually we're getting closer to Halloween we will be doing a bunch more of the uh, walkthroughs and I'll probably go through uh, other stores like at homes and eventually Walmart you know other stores maybe Hallmark we'll see what they do with that again I'm not sure about that but anyway We'll do some walkthroughs as we get closer to Halloween. One thing I've noticed about Trick or Treat Studios, I don't have an issue with it. I do, but I don't. Is the fact that they're raising their prices on their masks now because they're now mass produced and it's all about profits. Uh, their masks can be hit and miss. They're a lot better than most masks out there when it comes to being below Trick or Treat Studios. And then there are those masks that are above Trick or Treat Studios, but you're going to be paying an arm and a leg for them. When it comes to Trick or Treat Studios, ever since uh, Halloween Kills, the Michael Myers mask that they got just officially came out, they decided to go ahead and raise their prices an extra $10. Not a big issue, but it's just enough to stand there and say, okay, that's just a little too much for a mask in my opinion. Now, some people wouldn't have a problem with it, but for me, because I'm on a budget, um, I would have a, a little bit of an issue to it, so I would wait until the actual prices drop. Then I'm going to get that Halloween Kills mask from Trick or Treat Studios. But right now, I'm just going to wait. If it doesn't lower in price, then I'm just not going to get it, okay? But I'm sure I'll come across one where I can get it cheap enough. But long story short, they did raise their prices on a lot of their masks, especially on Amazon. Uh, most of them, again, went up in $10, so I kind of took... All the masks from Trick or Treat Studios, which is like two or three of them. And I got rid of them because they raised the prices on them. And I wasn't willing to pay that kind of money for those masks. But I do have Ghoulish Productions. As well as some occasional rubies. I'm not a big fan of rubies because they're more or less bottom end type masks. You just got to get the right mask and it's got to look right. Like my Herman Munster mask from rubies. That came in defective because they didn't actually paint the damn eye. Because it's mass produced. So I end up painting it and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. It was a de decent looking mask. But like I said, if you did, it had its defects. Put it that way. Most masks you'll run into will have those problems. But anyway, I'm not going to keep dragging this out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day.